Hey yo, so we've been working with square roots, but what happens when we throw some variables into the mix? Here we have a square root of 4 and a square root of x squared. Now, we know square root of 4 is 2, but if we need to factor this down, this would be 2 times 2, so we'd have a pair of 2's or 2 squared, and we would get the answer of just 2. Well, exactly what we knew from when we started. Let's say we wanted to break down this x squared. This would be x times x. Since we've got a pair of x's or an x squared, we square root that. The x is what's going to come out as our answer. So the same basic principle of breaking things down into perfect squares or into pairs is going to work with variables. Let's check out some more. Here we've got square root of y squared. Well, we could break that down and that's y times y. I have a pair right here, so my answer would be y. Next we've got Square root of y to the fourth. This y to the fourth is going to be y times y times y times y. Four y's, right? So if we wanted to find pairs, we've got one pair here and one pair here, which means our answer is going to be y times y or y squared. Let's check out this one. Square root of y to the sixth. This would break down to y times y times y times y times y times y. Six y's, and if we wanted to break all of these into pairs, we'd have a pair here, that's one, two pairs, three pairs, that would be y times y times y, or y cubed, or y to the third. So you might be noticing a pattern here, and that pattern would be by dividing your exponent by 2, you will get how many pairs there are, okay? So let's take that rule here. Here we have an exponent of 2, we divide that by 2, we'll have 1 y left over. Here we have y to the 4th, 4 divided by 2 would be 2, that leaves us with y squared. Here we have y to the 6th power, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we're left with y to the 3. So applying that rule here, here we have square root of a to the 12th. Instead of drawing 12 a's and circling pairs, I know that 12 divided by 2 equals 6, so my answer is going to be a to the 6th power. Over here, square root of b to the 200. Instead of drawing 200 b's, I can just do 200 divided by 2, which would give me 100, and I know my answer is going to be b to the 100th power. Mr. Zonker, what happens if the exponent is odd and 2 won't divide e in evenly? Well, let's first take a look at square root of 8. If we broke down square root of 8, that would be 4 times 2, 2 and 2. We'd have a pair of 2's, and we'll be left with 2, and this 2 is going to be left inside the square root. This would simplify to 2 square root of 2. Same thing for variables. If we take this x cubed, that would be 3 x's, 1, 2, 3. We've got one pair with one left over. That would leave us with x square root of x. Let's try a few of those. Here we have square root of m to the fifth. Well, I know that 5 divided by 2 is going to equal 2 with 1 left over. I'm going to say 2 remainder 1 because 2 goes into 4, but there's 1 left over. So my answer is going to be m squared because I had to go in evenly twice with that one extra left over, so I'm going to have square root of m. Let's take a look at q to the 61 power over here. Well, I know that 61 divided by 2, 2 goes into 60 30 times with one left over, so I'm going to have q to the 30th power square root of 1q left over. Looking at this b to the 17, I know that 2 goes into 16 8 times, so that's going to be b to the 8, and there's going to be 1 left over, so that'll be square root of b. Notice I kind of did this in my head here, and you'll, as you do pra practice with these, you'll be able to do these quicker and quicker. I knew that 2 went into 16 8 times, and then 1 left over gives me 17, so I have square root of b. Whenever you have more complex square roots, it's okay, just take it one variable at a time. So here we have square root of a to the sixth, b to the fifth. Let's start with a to the sixth. I know two goes into six three times, that's going to leave me with a cubed. And then we'll move on to b to the fifth. Well, I know that 
2 goes into 5 twice. That's going to be b squared with a remainder of 1. So I'm going to have inside my square root 1b left over. And that's going to be my answer. Just simplifying each one one at a time. Let's take a look at this one. Square root of 12, x to the 8th, y to the 12th. Well, first, let's start with this 12 here. That 12 is going to break down to 4 times 3. 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. So I have a pair of 2s with 1 3 left over. So I'm going to put my 2 on the outside and inside my square root over here. I know I have this 3 left. So I'll put a 3, just like we did last lesson. Now let's take this x to the 8th. 2 goes into 8 4 times. That's going to leave me with x to the 4th. There's no, none left over because it went in perfectly. Now what about y to the 12th? 2 goes into 12 6 times. So that's going to give me y to the 6th. And again, there's nothing left over. So my answer is just going to be 2x to the 4th, y to the 6th, square root of 3. I didn't need to draw this extra long square root, but anyway, there's the answer. Now when dealing with variables, all the same rules that you learned about square roots are still going to apply. For example, if we multiply these two terms, this would be 3x squared of 5x squared times negative 2x square root of 10x. The same rules of multiplication apply. So first, we're going to start with 3x times negative 2x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then x times x is x squared. Now, the rest, we're going to multiply inside the square roots. Here we have 5 times 10. That's going to give us a 50. And we've got x squared times x. That's going to give us x cubed. Now, let's proceed to... Simplify further. Looking at this 50 here, we could break that down. That would be 5 times 10, 5 times 2, and we're going to have a 5 that we're taking out. Remember, this 5 is going to multiply to this negative 6, giving us negative 30, and inside the square root, we're going to be left with this 2. Next, if we simplify the x cubed, well, 2 goes into that once, so we're going to pull out 1x from this, right? We're going to pull out an x, and we're going to have 1x left inside the square root. Now this x has to times by the x squared. That's going to give us an x cubed on the outside, and inside the square root we'll be left with that leftover x that we had since this was an odd number. So our final answer is going to be negative 30x cubed times the square root of 2x.